I'm Lisa with Lisa Boone Designs and today we are in, um, well we're on location. Here's a pedestal oval table and a beautiful set of carved chairs that we're going to be giving new life. From a house where I had acquired a whole bunch of stuff, this past weekend we had a massive indoor yard sale. I sold a lot of stuff, there's still a lot of stuff in here and the table didn't sell as is and I was glad because I really wanted to make it over. I had this idea and I wanted to try it. I felt the table was small enough that I could conquer it. Now I have some issues with the table and so we're gonna see what happens and we're gonna learn from it together. I started applying the stripper without taking a good shot of some of the damage that was like mold on here. There's a lot of things that had mold. Um, true story, the best way to clean mold up is actually not bleach, it is hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to apply this stripper with this chip brush and we're just going to get it on there nice and good. This is a carbide scraper. I'm not sure if you've ever used one or not. Let me know in the comments, but I actually love using it and I probably could have used just this alone, maybe in a little bit of sanding. After you strip, you definitely want to remove and deactivate the stripper, remove all the residue. You can do that using paint thinner or mineral spirits. They're pretty much the same thing. And so I just wipe it generously all over the table and use a rag to clean it up. After sanding, you can use a microfiber cloth, or here I'm using a tack cloth, and it just removes all of the residue so that you could have a really nice clean finish when you put your varnish on. I used a 50-50 blend of peroxide and water to remove the dark stains on the table. I ended up doing several coats of this, and it really worked beautifully. So I put hydrogen peroxide on the whole table and let it sit and then just dried it. And I even used a hot iron and a lot of the stain came up. I used this wire brush to brush the entire table. This is supposed to pull out the texture and the grain of the wood when you do the next steps. Definitely lightened up a bunch since I've had it here for a couple hours drying. So tomorrow I'm gonna get on the DIY paint page and see what we can do. I'm gonna do a whitewash with beadboard and I've got this here so I'm going to start getting this together. This house had, I didn't realize when I came and looked at it and I was like oh this is easy I could I could do this. Um, a lot of vintage, everything vintage here. Look how thick and yummy. So 
I totally missed that the house was full of mouse poop. Mouse poop everywhere. And um, man, that was hard. You can make a wash using any of the DIY paint colors and see how nice and soupy, but the pigment is still there. That's what I love about DIY paint. So I take my Klingon brush and I brush on my wash and I do this in sections and it's very hot in this house so it dries very fast so that's why I did it even in smaller sections that maybe I would ordinarily. And don't worry, the floors are getting redone in this house. This entire house is getting remodeled. So I was able to do a lot of stuff there and I didn't have to worry about making messes. So then I take a lint-free cloth and I wipe it down. And this really does a great job of neutralizing the table because the center was slightly a different color. It really does help to bring it all together. So I'm glad that I did this step. had these cushions on them so I used this as my inspiration piece to paint this table and this was a tribute to the lady that used to live here and I wanted to use the cushions with the table so I'm using DIY paints aviary and Klingon brush s30 the Klingon brushes are best if they're pre wet so I just soak it in the water and then I take all the excess water off of it. It helps your paint to glide and it just does a better job. Now that the top of my table is dry, I'm taking DIY paints dark and decrepit and I'm just pouring out a little bit. Normally, I do this straight on to the table and I spray it with a lot of water, but I'm pre-mixing my stain and I'm using my blue applicator brush to apply my quote unquote stain. And I'm doing this right over that white. So I'm trying not to reactivate the white. I'm trying to use very light strokes. And this is what's going to bring that grain out in combination of the wire brush and the white stain that I do underneath, then the dark and decrepit, it's what brings it all together. Now I'm taking black velvet and I'm going to apply it to the base of my table. I only do one coat when I'm using black typically and if I need to touch anything up, I can touch it up as a half coat, but I am planning on distressing so I only did one coat on this one. So for the chairs, the base is an aviary and I'll end up painting the seats in the black velvet just to switch it up a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting and definitely custom look. When painting spindles, it's best to go back and forth instead of up and down. And I love using the S30 because it just helps it. You could also use one of the pointy sisters brushes because they're tapered and they do a really great job as well. I do two full coats of the green um, just because I didn't want it to look splotchy and the, the spindles were a little bit slick. So I ended up doing just two coats and it did really well. After I did all of the green, then I went ahead and I painted my seats in the black velvet. So last night I got my husband to help me load the car up. It's a small SUV, it's my old car that I lug everything back and forth to the store with and Ari usually drives it a lot. So she's gonna kill me because 
I didn't think it would be this bad, but it smells in here. I'm gonna have to get air freshener because it's overwhelming. <laughs> but as you can see, it is jam full and I'm getting ready to go ahead and drop this off at the Goodwill. So I just got back from Goodwill and I dropped off 20 full 33 gallon bags full of shoes, clothes, curtains, sheets, shears, and rugs. And the lady couldn't believe it. And I'm probably gonna be bringing more stuff, but first I wanna go ahead and get back to the table. I'm grateful to my Father in Heaven for cool weather. It feels so much better in here. It's so much cooler outside. And so I think it's gonna be a lot easier to get this done. So last night when my husband was looking at it, he thought it was too light. And I agree, I think because I'm, I went with black, um, it's too light. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my sponge. I've got a little um, orange glove that is lined with, so it makes it a little bit nicer. The purple gloves were making me sweat so bad. So I got some gloves that are for staining and stripping. And so I still have the bowl here. And do you see how it's kind of evaporated? So it's gotten a little bit darker and thicker. I think that will help a lot. I've just got to go and soak this a little bit in water before I apply it. And I'm gonna do one full coat. In this step, you can go as light or as dark as you want. You could have applied it full strength and, or just put a little bit of water up to as much water as I put. I wanted to take it slow. I didn't want to get it dark fast because dark and decrepit can create a walnut finish, like a beautiful, I've done that before. You can watch videos right here to see that happening. And I wanted it to be a, on the lighter side, but I didn't know how dark it was going to go. And so I'm glad I took it step by step. And I love the way that it ended up turning out. Of course, the lighter version would have been great as well. And as you can see, this is really soupy. So I'm um, being extra careful and making sure I don't leave any drip marks. Surprise, surprise, I am actually using poly acrylic uh, to seal this table. I had a whole bunch of it um, and I just decided to try it and use it. I've used it only maybe two other times with DIY paint 
and I honestly prefer Big Top. There are different issues with polyacrylic that I don't love. I tried using the sponge and it did help a whole lot. Polyacrylic dries very, very fast and it is a very, very durable finish, but because it has chemicals, it does alter the paint just a little bit. So just be prepared that the color is gonna change a little when you use polyacrylic because DIY paint is chemical free. So I go back and forth using the sponge and the brush, especially on the hard to get places. I'm not sure about the table. So I mixed up a little bit more of dark and decrepit, I added a little bit of water. And I'm gonna see what happens. I'm not sure if I should do this or not. I like it. I just think it's too light for the table. The table and chairs are coming out really great, The or the base. There's the, um, the chairs. So I think it needs to be a little bit darker. So let's just see what happens. All right, it's another day and I came in earlier because we went ahead and delivered the last bedroom set that I sold on Marketplace and I quickly went ahead and did one coat of polyacrylic on top and it already looks so much better. I really like it and so I'm going to go ahead and use a I'm gonna go ahead and use a 320 sanding uh, little square and I'm gonna lightly sand it because polyacrylic can get little bubbles on it and I want a nice smooth surface. And then I'm probably going to put three, maybe four coats of polyacrylic. We'll see how we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the chairs one more time. I love the way the chairs look. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Using this sponge is super easy with the polyacrylic, so I'm glad I tried it. The one thing is polyacrylic does get bubbly and it also gets soapy. So after a while, you can see the soap. That's why you want to sand in between. And also any dust might get on there and you want to remove that dust um, and you keep doing that in between all of the layers and it comes out really good. The other thing, because of this soap, periodically I rinsed it out and started from scratch and a nice wet sponge does help to get, get it gliding on and, and get it nice and um, coated. So I really like the way that this has turned out. I think this is gonna be my last coat. I've done all of the chairs twice and 
I love it. I can't wait to get the seat cushions on there and take a picture and get it listed. I want to sell this quickly. Okay, this is what it looked like before. And now this is what it looks like after. What do you guys think? I love the way that it turned out. I love the cushions. I, I did wash them. I brought them home and I washed them and I brought them back nice and clean. And I just can't believe the way that it looks. I absolutely love this color combination and I love the way that the top came out as well. I don't typically do wood tops, but when I do, I end up loving it. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about this transformation? Also, if you're looking for any of the products that I use today, uh, especially a DIY paint, um, please be sure to go to my website, lisaboondesigns.com. All of the links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I would appreciate it if you would sprinkle it. I would appreciate it if you would like and comment. Let me know what you think about it. I love to hear your kind remarks and your questions. If you have any, go ahead and post them. I would love to answer and help you along your painting journey. So stay tuned for more from me. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Guys, I hope that you have an incredibly blessed day. Ciao.